The physio ball wall squat is a popular exercise often used as a training tool for free body squats or other ground based exercises. It's also an exercise of choice because it's thought to produce a well balanced workout that is easy on the joints. But whether it's a precursor to other more dynamic exercises or produces well-balanced, low-stress training effects is really dependent upon the way in which it's done. Because even the best exercises will have a questionable outcome if they're not executed properly. For example, let's take this starting position. As you can see, the subject's feet are well ahead of his body. This causes his center of gravity to fall significantly behind his base of support and in response he has to lean back into the ball. In fact he's leaning so far back that his toes are actually coming up off the floor placing his weight well into his heels. From this posture he can really only drop his hips straight down leading to a position which will not only influence the forces that he produces but also the balance of loading across his joints. With his feet well ahead of him, the subject descends to the position that you see here. Some might find this perfectly acceptable because as you can plainly see, his knees are well behind his toes. But looks can be deceiving because in this instance, the forces that he creates from this position result in imbalance loading across his joints. In order to measure the forces produced during this exercise, we replicated the movement on an instrumented footplate. It may appear on casual observation that he's pushing down into the floor, but with his weight so far back, the reality is he's actually creating a significant forward horizontal force through his feet. The resulting force vector is more than 25 degrees off the vertical going from his heel to a point towards the top of the ball. The torque loading at any one joint is the product of the magnitude of that force vector and the perpendicular distance from the line of force to the center of any joint. As you can see here, the line of force is farther from the knee and closer to the hip. This isn't a badly imbalanced exercise, but there definitely is a greater load on the knee than there is on the hip. And if the objective is to create balance or reduce the stress on the knee, then it's unlikely that this position will accomplish it. An alternative for this exercise is to begin with the feet aligned more directly beneath the hips, as seen here. It would be better still if his feet were really directly beneath his hips. But from this position, he can push his hips back and down instead of straight down potentially creating better balance. But as we'll see, that's not always the case either. By starting with an improved posture, our subject appears to have established a better position at the lowered phase of the exercise. His hips are pushed back, his trunk is tilted slightly forward, his feet are flat on the floor, and his knees are aligned over his toes. From this position, he is less compelled to push forward and instead can create a more vertical force. In fact, our simulation revealed that roughly half the horizontal force component is generated, resulting in a force vector that is directed approximately 9 degrees from vertical, beginning at the center of his foot. But does this create balanced torques at the joints? Well, no, actually, it doesn't. As the line of force changes from a more horizontal to a more vertical angle, it moves farther from the hip and closer to the knee. As you can see here, the hip torque is now almost twice as great as the knee torque. If we wanted to reduce the load on the knee while increasing hip loading, this would suffice. But if we're seeking muscular balance, then this may produce adverse effects. Frankly, the problem here is the ball itself, which allows the performer to assume what is really an unbalanced posture. In essence, 
the ball is functioning like a set of training wheels, for if we removed it, he would surely fall backwards. The question is, is this effective, or should we eliminate the training wheels and teach the skill properly from the beginning? Then our subject would learn to move properly, develop balance and strength, and quite possibly avoid complications in the process.